Hi, I'm Li Hao. Let's talk about examples of using Svelte Actions. And today we're going to look at one Svelte Actions, which is use tooltip. So let's take a look over here and let's, let me tell you what is a use tooltip action do. Right, so um, you have an element over here. Uh, in this case, maybe hello world. Let me just change it over like, make it simple. Like, hello world, right? No dynamic elements and whatsoever. But uh, over here we can have um, title. Say, um, this is hello world. And this is a greeting, okay? Right, so what happens is that when you hover over hello world, wait for it, and then you will see a tooltip, right? This is a built-in uh, browser behavior. Like when you hover over on an element that has a title, it will show you that this is a greeting. Uh, yeah, the, the title, right? But what if you want to customize the tooltip? You want something different. You want, um, you know, like something that looks nicer, that suits your style or theme of your website. Right, then probably you want to do, uh, uh, you, you want to build your own tooltip, right? So uh, what we can do over here is that maybe we add like on hover events, like like mouse over and like when you hover on top of this element, you want to show like customize, uh, nicely built uh, tooltip element instead of like the default browser behavior, right? So that's probably what we want to do over here and that's what we want to achieve. Right, so um, so that would be having like use tooltip uh, action, and we're gonna implement that use tooltip action. Right, so before we actually dive in um, to implement this, um, what I want to do today, which is slightly different, let's approach this differently, right? Uh, why I want to do this is that there's multiple ways of doing something. Right, uh, I can't say that actions is always the best way of doing it. Um, you know, some some other ways may be better than using actions, right? So uh, you you would never know which one is better, right? Uh, it comes with probably a bit of experience and probably a bit of like gut feeling, as well as like what kind of stylistic kind of way that you prefer to write instead of the other. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna try something different, which is we're gonna approach this by use, writing it as a component, a tooltip component. And then uh, we will refactor it a bit to convert that component into an action. And then hopefully by the end of it, you will see like side by side, two different kind of uh, two codes side by side and you compare yourself whether you prefer the way of writing it as a component or do it as an action. All right, so let's go in and take a look. Okay, to start writing as a component, I will start with a tooltip component. Whoops, sorry. Tooltip.svelte. So, um, so before I implement this again, I will have to imagine how I would use this tooltip component, right? So probably uh, I would have like a tooltip um, that wraps around inner content, right? So probably I have over here a tooltip component and within it is like the hello world. And in the tooltip component, probably I have a props um, called title and that is like this is a greeting, right? So um, tooltip will wrap around this hello world, whatever it is, you can have like multiple divs, multiple, like all kinds of different kind of children elements in it. Uh, it will wrap around it and then whenever you hover on those elements, it will show you a tooltip called uh, the title, which is, this is a greeting. So to do this, I'm gonna start with having a script that has a props called title. Probably I just default it to empty string, um, right? So this is how, this is what we will be passing in. And then we will render whatever it is as a slot. Right, we'll call it as a default slot. So whatever is inside the tooltip component will be rendered in here. And to add event listener, probably we'll have to wrap around with a div uh, because um, you can't add a directive on, you can't add event listener to slots, like say on mouse over, 
uh, yeah, you can't. So if I import it, you will see the error now. Yep, you can't have directives on the tooltip. And um, this is because, you know, a slot over here can have, can be this uh, text element can be having, can have multiple divs and all the stuff, right? You, you wouldn't know like which of these elements needs to be applied with that action. Or are you going to add apply to all of the elements, right? Um, I mean, it's not impossible, but it's not implemented right now. So, you know, probably you can go and implement it, right? So as far as we are doing right now in uh, version 3.31.2, Right, this is not possible. So we will have to wrap it with a div and apply that over here. Uh, so on mouse over, and we are going to have a mouse over event. And then we will gonna listen to, okay, so we're gonna listen to three different kind of events. One is mouse over so that we know that um, uh, it, it's hover on, on top of it. And then we are going to listen to on mouse leaf so that we know that uh, uh, the mouse is left the, the element itself so that we need to remove that um, remove that uh, tooltip, right? And over here, we are going to have, uh, based on a condition, which is, is Harvard, I'm gonna show a tooltip which we can style if we want. So we're gonna call div, and then over here is we're gonna render like the title in here, right? And okay, so over here we're gonna define all these three because like you know Spell is complaining about them. Let's define uh, is Harvard is false by default. Uh, function on mouse uh, mouse over. Gonna set is Harvard to true. Uh, mouse leaf is Harvard is false. Okay, and over here, uh, we can style a bit on our, you know, this tooltip. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna uh, put some border so that you know that it's there. Uh, um, position is gonna be absolute, um, and I'm gonna um, so that you know it will be placed at right where your mouse is hover onto, right? Um, yep, I think that's for now. Uh, probably background will be white, uh, so that you know black, black, black uh, border, white background, and yeah, maybe adding some padding as well, four pixels. Okay. So we're done with here. I'm gonna show this uh, tooltip component. So I'm gonna copy this over, title. Uh, I'm gonna remove this. I'm gonna call tooltip. Right, so, um, wait, hold on. Tooltip, hello world. Remove this. Uh, hello world. Ah. Uh, I have two div over here, so let me re uh, maybe add a class for this one called tooltip. So right now the the div I have two divs, so it's applied the style to both of the divs. So probably I want to make it more specific. Uh, make this a tooltip class instead, right? So when I hover and I hover over, you you will see that this is a greeting, and I remove my mouse on mouse leaf. I will hide that uh, tooltip. Right, so um, this itself can be, uh, as previously what we have is a H1, right? So we're gonna rep replace this with H1 tooltip. Now, yeah. So one thing you probably notice is that this is always below the, uh, wherever we hover on, you always show that it's below um, the elements, right? Because it's, it's written over here, like it's right below it. So we have set position is absolute, but we haven't set like the top and left position so that, you know, it's it's always uh, right below the mouse uh, position, the cursor position when we hover over. So I'm gonna have style over here. 
And I think I will gonna have two variables, which is one is the X uh, and another would be Y, right? And over here, when we mouse over, where we can take the event and then we can set like X equals to event dot pitch X and Y equals to event dot pitch Y. So what this means is that um, uh, when we our mouse over that we have the event object and it itself has like uh, some properties like pitch X and pitch Y will tell us that the X and Y position within a pitch, right? So once we have this, we probably will say like the top uh, will base on the X pixel and left, oh, sorry, top should be Y and then left should be x pixel right and let's see right it will base on where but once i move around it is not showing because mouse uh over will only happens when we move move in right so i move in from here you will see it's here but it's stuck there and i come out hidden and if I move on here you will see that it's showing here it's stuck here and it, yeah right so um if I want it to move around as my mouse is moving, probably what I need to do is uh, add a mouse move event, right? So mouse move event. And I can do this, I can copy this over. So mouse move also have a pitch, mouse move events also have pitch X and Y, which I can up constantly update the X and Y. So here, what I want to do is I'm gonna have on mouse move, mouse move. Right now, when I come in, hey, let's see. Uh, it's it's not showing probably because as uh, it's it's constantly sh rendering right below my cursor, and as it's showing right below my cursor, um, my cursor is now hover on top of uh, that tooltip. That's why it's uh, uh, it's it's like a mouse leaf because it's leaving from my hello world element. Right, so I can solve that by probably add some distance, like five over here, so that it's not right below my mouse. So when I come in, yeah, it's it's always five from uh five to the right and to the bottom of like my mouse cursor. So yeah, looks good, right? So um probably I'm gonna say now since we can see the tooltip, I'm gonna style it slightly nicer right not like a square-ish white background black border kind of thing gonna probably add some border radius for pixels um border will probably um slightly grayish maybe uh let's say 888 let's see looks slightly better or uh, not i uh, probably even like lighter uh say ddd right slightly lighter and yeah it looks nicer i guess right so um this will be okay i think last thing i i probably would like to have some box shadow like one pixel one pixel so ddd right some sort of shadow makes it nicer right it's like it stands up Right, so now we, we have this tooltip implemented using a component, right? Um, yeah, so this is how you would write it as a component. And as mentioned earlier, we we're gonna write it, re-implement this whole thing as, a, as an action. And let's see how we can do it, right? So we're gonna have like a tooltip JS, which is an action, I'm gonna export function tooltip. Uh, so an action is a function that takes in two parameters. Let's say one is the elements, one is the params. And again, before we even start, we're gonna design how we would want to use this action, right? Um, I think over here you have seen how I uh, envision how I would be using it will be use tooltip. And you might ask me like, do I need to pass in a title? I mean like no, uh, because the title, I can get it from the elements attribute called title and I don't even have to pass in like, you know, it as a string over here as a params. Yeah, no point. Um, unless you're telling me that this title can, 
can can be changed, right? So are you able to dynamically read uh, the title from this attribute? Um, and if it's not, then probably we might want to pass in dynamically over here so that, you know, when it changes, it will inform our tooltip action that it changes, then we will update the tooltip uh, contents in, uh, in our tooltip, right? But I think for now, we just assume that it won't change. So uh, this is good enough. We just use tooltip and we just read it from this elements uh, attributes. So, which means that I don't even need a params, right? And I don't even need, uh, since I don't have params, then I don't even need uh, an update method because it will never update because there's no par params. Params is always undefined. So uh, over here, I will have to, so I have tooltip that I use three events, right? So I would have to do the same thing as well. I'm gonna return to these three events. So I'm gonna say elements, uh, elements that add event, listener, and then mouse over, probably mouse over over here. So I'm gonna be quick, copy all this, come here, paste, paste it in. Okay, and as I mentioned always, when you, you add an event listeners in an action, remember, remember to remove them from destroy method. So that's what I'm gonna do now first, even before I implement like mouse over, mouse leave and mouse move, right? Remove event listener, remove event listener, remove event listener. Okay, so now I need to implement mouse over, mouse move and mouse leave. I'm gonna have it over here. Um, of course, uh, I mean variables over here will have no effect, will not be reactive at whatsoever, right? Um, so what mouse over is going to do is going to uh, create a diff dynamically and then append to the body and yeah. So I'm going to have a reference of a diff here because once we uh, created a diff, when we leave, we're going to remove it, right? So what this means is that we probably will have to uh, re-implement this logic, the if logic, right? So we know that its hover is always being triggered by the mouse over and it will be true when it's mouse over, we'll change to true when it's mouse over and will change to false when it's mouse leave. So we can simply like create a div over here and create a div and append it. And we can know that we can all be safe that to remove it over here. Uh, which is uh sorry, which is document body dot remove child div, which means um this uh this two lines and this one line is actually trying to implement this logic of if is hover right, uh when it's hover the if and the is hover, uh we are creating a div, and it's false and we we'll remove it, so we can remove these two lines now. Um, so this div, right, we need to know what is the tooltip uh, title. So what we can have over here now is um, we're going to probably uh, see, let's see. Okay, we are going to read it from here. So div dot set uh, text content. I'm going to do it all this right before the append child. Just that, you know, we create elements and uh, update all of it before we just uh, uh, append it to the body, right? Um, it's just like, uh, th there's no particular reason why this has to be this way. Um, it's just uh, my, my personal habit. So I'm gonna set the text content as element.get attribute title, right? And, and then over here, uh, we need the X and Y position. I think div.style will need something to do because basically we don't have this. So we're going to copy all of it over here and paste it in. And then uh, X and Y, which is the top and left, gonna copy these two as well and paste it right in over here. Right, so this is a... 
So X and Y, right? So probably this can move it up so that we've defined X and Y. Uh, I guess probably we just remove, we just paste this whole thing in over here. Right, so you now you notice that uh, manipulating DOM yourself manually is a bit, it's a bit hard, isn't it? Right, if you can use components, use fields to handle all this for you, isn't that great? So here, um, I need to also style the top. I'm gonna update this as well. Top equals this plus pixel. I think better to just make it like a string literal. Uh, oops. Okay, and this as well. Pixel. So div dot style dot left. Right, and I believe that's it. So I'm going to uncomment this and I'm going to import the tooltip function from the tooltip JS. And to differentiate, this is hello world from action and this is hello world from components. Let's see. Uh, whoops, create elements. Uh, spelling error, create elements. Whoops. Let's see. Whoops. It's not creating. Uh, let's see. Let's see what is missing. Position. Um, okay. This is working. This is not. Um, let's see. I think we can inspect elements a bit to help us out. Let's see, I have a h1 and a div. Okay, when I hover, it's not adding something, isn't it? And does it show any error? It's not showing any error as well, isn't Okay, I'm gonna just not doing anything on mouse leave and... Okay, so it's... Is it the same area where it's, it's showing and then it's removing console log mouse leave? Ah, I know. Okay, okay. So mouse leave, mouse move. Ah, this is a kindergarten mistake and I made it. Mouse leave, mouse move. Right, so let's see. This is a greeting. This is a greeting. So from actions and from components. Right. So um, if you're gonna ask me whether which one I'm gonna do, and I mean, honestly, I, I don't want to pass, pass any judgment over here. You can decide yourself, right? Um, Doing it in a, Component is slightly more declarative, right? You don't have to take care about creating a div and stuff. Um, doing it over a tooltip, probably you will have to manually add event listeners, manually create the div and stuff, right? Um, yeah, but then uh, one thing that we can think about here is that, uh, I mean, one thing about the component is that you wrapped the whole slot with a div, right? So that is one extra div created. Uh, even your slot will only have one element. Uh, but using a tooltip, uh, it's different uh, in a way that you will apply it on that element that you want, right? You don't wrap it with uh, any div. So one difference is that probably, for example, maybe I have a paragraph over here. I'm gonna say hello story something, and I want to have a tooltip. Right, and I'm gonna say from felt, right? And then you note, as you notice that this is creating in a new line because it wraps it with a div. But if say, uh, I want to wrap it in a span, you know, span, and I use tooltip. 
Okay, I'm gonna add title so that you can see that it's showing something. Uh, yeah, I will do this as well over here. And you know, I can from Svelts and uh, this is inline because you just add it to the span. You can choose to use a span instead of using a div. Well, yeah, I mean, that that is probably one of the side effects of using components because of uh, multiple reasons. One is that you can't add event listener directly on the slot right now. And probably then you would say that, uh, Maybe I need to, you know, dynamically change this div to, it depends on whether I want a span, I want a div, you know, uh, is there a dynamic elements? Uh, no, there's no dynamic elements for now. There's only dynamic components. So, uh, yeah, I can't, can I like choose div or something else? Uh, yeah, that that's like a, uh, some limitations that we have using components right now, but you don't have it with actions. But I wouldn't say action is better because, you know, writing this, all this is kind of a hassle. But yeah, it up to you. Choose it yourself, right? Uh, there, there's things that you can do it better with components. There are things better with actions. And yeah, I'm trying to show you side by side so that you can see it yourself. And I write it this way, like we write it from a component and then I transfer it to actions. You can see that actually that component itself handles a lot of like adding and removing event listeners. The, some uh, decorative way of writing something and you have to manually manual, uh, do it yourself uh, if you write it as an action. All right. Um, so one last thing that I want to show you uh, is that you can com kind of com um, combine the both of like goods of the both worlds which is the good of uh, having components, uh, writing it declaratively, as well as having actions created uh, using an actions, right? So uh, this is one last trick that I have for you, which is now I'm gonna say tool tip from action just to differentiate it. And this thing is gonna be just the tool tip uh, itself. So we're gonna say script, I'm gonna export, Let's title and over here I'm going to use the title. Okay, and over here I'm going to have, I'm going to copy all these things over here uh, to apply to the style. Uh, apply it to the div. And then uh, this one, right? Copy over, style, um, this, right? Let me just remove this. I can make it multiple lines so that it's easier to read. Enter. Right, and then so uh, this should be X and Y. I'm gonna export let X, export let Y. And I'm not sure whether you're guessing where I'm going for. Basically, I'm going to import this X component tool tip from tool tip from action dot felt. Right. And I'm going to use this to render uh, the component for me. Uh, meaning I created a div. Uh, let's see, register even I created a div. Yeah, I can create a div and let's see, let's see. Oh no, I don't even need to create a div. Uh, I can create a, let's tool tip and tool, hey, wait, I, tool tip component. So I'm going to say tool tip component equals new tool tip. And then the props will be title will be the element get title. And let's see, I am, <laughs> pardon me. I'm not fairly sure right now. Uh, spelled component API. API docs, uh, create components, components. 
Okay, options. Right, then I say, oh, props and the target, right? So props, they have the title. X would be the event page X plus five. Wait, wait, wait. I think I have plus five over here. So event page X. Y equals to event page Y. And I'm going to have, uh, yeah, that's it. And targets is the documents.body. And that's it, I think. So I can comment all this away and comment this out. And let's see, it works, whether it works. It's kind of work, right? Um, it's just that we didn't remove it. Uh, so yeah, it kind of works. Let's see, let's see. Uh, this is position absolute and everything. Okay, it's correct. So next is that we need to update whenever a mouse move and we need to remove when it's not. So here I'm gonna say tooltip component dot destroy, right? I think it's called destroy, right? Yeah. Destroy. And here I have the, uh, I'm gonna set, I call a set. Right, I can call a set, which is uh, tool tip component dot set. Let's say um, left, uh, no, X and Y, right? X, Y. So X is the page X and Y is the page Y. Right, top is the, ah, top is the Y and left is the X. Okay, so no wonder just now was place it weirdly. Now you see, it's working. It's working fine from actions. So you can use, um, you can define it like as a component and then you can use a spelled component within an action, right? This way, um, you know what? I'm going to copy this over and I'm going to say tooltip, tooltip using tooltip v1 right so that uh uh this file is still around you can oh wait this is js file right this file is around you can uh read it i will send this a uh, repl and uh, in the description so they can play with it you can see the three different versions so i uncomment all this so that it's it's around for you to play around uh, i Yep, let me just do it. Yeah, so this is you use you you do it with you know iteratively programmatically create like a diff and then you set elements and attributes and set styles and stuff, you manually update it. Uh this way is you utilize a Svelte component API, you create uh you create a component uh, using Svelte, you create a tooltip, like just a tooltip. You can style it your way run like all the you know the CSS uh, scoping of the style uh, class names and all these things are there works fine, right? Even like you see X and Y, uh, you can like declaratively say X and Y, which is the top and left. Everything works like component as you wish, and then you create a new component instance. Um, you can target anywhere you want, uh, probably a body, and then you just update it with a sets API, and you can remove it when you destroy it when you are done with it. Right, this way you kind of get the best of best of both worlds, right? So I'm gonna just leave it here for you to decide what is your preferred way of writing, or you have a better way of writing, right? So leave that down in the comments. Tell me which one you like or which one you prefer. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you remember to comment down below, right? So. Uh, I, I'm going to have more examples of using Svelte actions and be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you know the next video is coming out and see you next time. Bye-bye.